Sync clap, sync clap, sync clap. All right, what's going on, peoples? A lot of you, actually not a lot of you, but some of you guys, actually, how do I want to start off this video? All up until recently, I started making products um, under the Oh My God brand company. And so now I feel it was just only appropriate to really include product information and just, you know, as much transparency, trans Sorry guys, I'm still sick and uh, trying to say things is kind of hard sometimes because I feel like I'm going to cough or a little bit of snot's about to come out. But anyways, um, yeah, so I just wanted to be very uh, transparent about the product and, and kind of just take you guys along for the ride of, of kind of how this, you know, the I'm a Guy company and, and even Rotor Right, how it just kind of progresses and, and, and how it evolves and continues on. Um, but the point of today's video is really to just kind of explain to you guys uh, what Umagrip is and, and just give you guys a little story about how it came to be. I think there's a, a couple of misconceptions out there about what the product is. Uh, first and foremost, it is not meant to replace a battery strap, okay guys? So I know you guys have probably seen by now a, a handful of videos, myself included, where I'm flying a, a mini quad uh, with a ba without a battery strap, you know, and I was I was flying this this heavy guy. It's a 5s 1500 milliamp uh, high voltage. This is from Thunder Power. Shout out to Thunder Power. But that's what I was flying on my mini quad, and uh, and yeah, it, I did all kinds of things to try and get it to come off, and and it didn't come off. But again, the point was not to show that. Uh, this is a product to replace a battery strap. I just wanted to emphasize how sticky it was. So let me tell you the quick backstory. The whole reason why, the whole reason why Omegrip came to be was because I designed the Remix frame, which some of you may be familiar with it. And the Remix frame, my whole concept with this was to have the battery as close to the center of the prop line as possible and, and to do that you know one of the ways to mount the battery was to mount it sideways like this and the problem that I had was that when you mounted the battery sideways like that I could only run one strap to uh, just one strap to get it in through there and in crashes uh, I'd find that the battery would move or it would eject uh, or it would get in the way of the props and so then I had this idea of, of this material that I had used for cell phones, um, you know, that, that keeps your cell phone stuck like when you're in a car. And I was like, perfect, I'll just take that and I will uh, attach some double sized sticky tape to it and uh, it'll work. That doesn't work. Uh, let me show you, let me show you what, what it does. So here's, here's that material that, that we bought and let me cut some, let me cut some tape out of here. So here's my double sided sticky tape. And here is one side. I'm gonna go ahead and stick it on there. So let me, let me actually get over here and make sure you guys can actually see it. So stick it on there. And here's the thing, it sticks, right? But if you try to peel it off, it actually comes off pretty easily. Like it's, it's not, I mean, it sticks, but it, it comes off it quite easily. And that has a lot to do with just the way this material works. It's got low surface area or high surface. I don't know. One, one of you smarter guys out there is going to figure this out. Uh, but that doesn't work. And so I wanted to use this, this material because it works great for not slipping. But then if you go to take the battery off, that thing comes off with, you know, comes off the frame and that's, that's, that's no bueno. So we started doing some research. We started talking to a couple of uh, polymer companies and we got really lucky that we were able to actually talk to one of the engineers and he explained on a scientific level why the 3M tape or any contact adhesive, because I even tried contact adhesive, like I straight up tried, you know, using stuff like this and I, you know, put it on there just, just to see would it stick, like what's it going to take to get this thing to stick. And it, it's just not going to happen because of the way the polyurethane interacts with, with adhesives. And so what we found out was that you, you had to, first you had to get the right adhesive and then you had to apply it during the curing process of the polyurethane. And you know, too early, you're just setting it onto water. Too late of the curing process, then you know what you just saw happens. 
And so it was, it, there was actually a lot of testing uh, to figure that out. Um, and then while we were doing that, we were like, okay, great. You know, since we were in the process of making it, we also started playing with the, the polyurethane mixture ratio. And so when you put more of one compound than the other, it makes it harder. And uh, in the world of material, uh, I don't know if it's materials, but in the world of this stuff, the way that you measure how stiff or soft something is is something called, um, you know, like the durometer or or a shore hardness. And there's a value that tells you how squishy or stiff or soft something is. And so the other thing that we found was that the squishier or softer it is, the stickier it got. But then the problem is, and let me show you, because I've got a handful of samples when we were playing with all of this stuff, trying to figure out what was best. So you could get uh, something more akin to like the uh, you know what you'd find what you could probably find around right now, and it's got something that's fairly stiffer, but it's not sticky. Or you can get you know here's another example of something pretty sticky, uh, but this is kind of thick, right? Or thick to something like this uh, that is extremely sticky as you can see very sticky so but the problem is is when you're taking your battery off or whatever this happens uh, so <laughs> all that to say you know you have we had to play with the ratios to find the right stickiness but without it falling apart so it had to be fairly durable and then we had to find the right thickness and squishiness because we also wanted to make sure that when you strap the you know or put a battery strap on there that it wouldn't compress and, and hit like, you know, a screw or a cap head or whatever. And so that's where Umagrip came from. Um, oh, the other thing too, having this, uh, so this is an example of the one that's on the remix, but if you look, you can see the surface has debossed uh, texture. Uh, in this case, it's my logo. Uh, that's also important because that also helps when you're taking the battery back off to keep from the gel pad from lifting from the frame because it's so sticky that it's actually even stickier than the adhesive that's on the back. So that's that's the whole story. Um, you know, like I, I I I just took something that I thought was the best material for the application, and then I just optimized it and made it better so that it would work well for a mini quad application. So a couple of things that I also want to point out with the product. Um, again, just another just disclaimer, it is not meant to replace a battery strap. Please still use a battery strap because if you do crash, it will. St there's still enough force for it to eject and you don't want that to happen. The other thing too is you know, over time, you know, all of the dust and dirt that mini quads attract, the stickiness does start to wear off a little bit. But I have found that even with it being moderately dusty and dirty, it's still plenty grippy for it to do its job. So don't feel like you have to clean it on the regular all the time. Really, I, to be honest, the only time that I've ever actually cleaned mine was when I landed straight up into like mud and dirt and it just kind of got everywhere. But it's plenty sticky enough and grippy enough to where if you're using a battery strap and you crash, it's not gonna go anywhere. That said, if you do need to clean it, all you need to do is just take a wet sponge, a damp sponge, something that doesn't lint, and you can just wipe it dry and it'll be just as fresh as day one. So the last thing that I want to cover about this whole thing is I know that a lot of you have been like kind of like <laughs> like where's it at this thing's like out of stock everywhere and uh, yeah I part of that is just because you know I made the product wasn't sure how well it was gonna do because I, I thought it was great but you know what what does anyone else think so I really ordered the very minimum amount that this manufacturer would allow me to order and you know lo and behold after we you know made the product announcement it was pretty much literally sold out in like a couple of hours, which is awesome. So thank you guys. I hope that you guys enjoy the product. Now that said, I did order a good quantity for this next round. So the product should be in stock at your local stores uh, within the next week, two weeks. Mm, I don't want to say two weeks because it's already on. It's, 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 we're in the middle of packing this right now. I'm, I'm actually hand packing this. Each one of these is actually being touched by by me and, and my team. So. Uh, yeah, whatever, whatever that's worth. Uh, actually, maybe I shouldn't say that. 
Man, maybe you all should wash your hands because now, now y'all got my germs. <laughs> okay, whatever. I'm gonna go ahead and edit that part out. All right, anyways, all that to say, um, that's Summer Grip. Uh, it'll be in stock. Oh, and you know what? It's also in, uh, some of you guys might be thinking that you can only order this through the Rotorite store. That's actually not true. Rotorite actually has a distribution network all around the world uh, for all of our products. So uh, no matter where you're at, if you're in Europe, if you're in uh, Asia, um, you know, obviously North America, there's likely to be a retailer, bleh, a reseller, retailer near you, or at least closer to you than, than maybe North America, that you could buy this and any other Rotorite product from. So check that out. Uh, don't, feel, don't think that you have to order it just from the Rotorite, the Rotorite store. Um, you know, if it doesn't make sense for you to buy it from the Rotorite store, there's definitely going to be other stores out there that you can check that out. On. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is, oh, no. I almost forgot, man, I almost forgot to say this. One of the other main reasons why Umma Grip came to be was because I, I was looking for, see, I'm a guy that doesn't use a 3D printed like session mount to mount my camera. I've always liked to, liked to hard mount it. Here you go. And nope, that's not it, hold on. There it is. So uh, some of you out there, are like me where I, I like to just have the GoPro um, you know mounted onto the surface and so that was part of the other reason why we we're playing with, with the ratios is because I wanted to come out with something that was perfect for the GoPro and minimizing or, or even eliminating jello so if you if you're like me and you like to just mount your session straight onto there um, or even if you use a mount like this uh, so if you use a mount like this where it's not it doesn't have a mounting point It's just got a flat surface that you mount onto your Quad like that. I wanted to come out with something that you would absorb, you know Jello basically and so in addition to the battery pad. I'm also got Nomo gel. Huh? Get it? Nomo gel. <laughs> so the difference between this and the Umma Grip, this is four millimeters thick, whereas the Umma Grip is three millimeters thick. Uh, and then on top of that, this has a slightly different texture on there, and the ratio, how how soft and squishy this is, is actually softer than the Umma Grip. And again, it's because we played with the ratios, and that's what we arrived to be perfect for the weight and size of a GoPro. So if you're one of the few people out there, or maybe one of the many, I don't know how many people are out there, that are like me and just like to mount the GoPro straight onto your frame, pick up some Noma gel, it'll definitely absorb some vibrations, and I haven't ejected a GoPro since using that because it's obviously so sticky. So um, again, if you're mounting it straight onto your frame, you're probably running a strap, so run a strap through it, run the Noma gel, it'd be good. All right, fellas, see you on the next one.